In this video, I'm gonna to try to answer the question of why would somebody wanna pay for ChatGPT Plus if you could just use Bing for free? And I'm also gonna compare a third option. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, before we get into it, let's quickly talk about the difference between the regular ChatGPT and ChatGPT Plus. What are you actually getting for that extra 20 bucks a month? Well, the main difference that most people probably care about is the priority access. If you have ChatGPT+, Plus, you get access to the service even when the servers are bogged down. So you'll no longer see that screen that says ChatGPT is at capacity right now. You get to jump in line and use it while normal people who don't pay for that have to wait until there's capacity again. Now, the second main difference is the speed at which it actually generates the results for you. Just check out this side-by-side side comparison that my friend Rowan Chung did of the difference in speed between regular chat GPT and GPT plus. On the left you've got the standard and on the right you've got chat GPT plus's turbo mode. You can actually see that plus is quite a bit faster. And then the third main difference is that you get priority access to new features. So all the cool stuff that they roll out you get to play with it first. All right, so now that we know the main differences between ChatGPT and ChatGPT Plus, let's try to answer the question, why the heck would you wanna pay this extra 20 bucks a month to get ChatGPT Plus if Bing is just gonna be rolling it out to everybody for free anyway? Now there's a third option that I think would be interesting to take a peek at as well. There's a tool called perplexity.ai that also uses GPT-3 behind the scenes, just like ChatGPT and just like Bing. Similar to Bing, it also can use results from the web to inform its responses. Let's add that into the mix and compare that one as an even third option because this one is publicly available to everyone right now as well. So in order to compare these tools side by side by side, I went over to my friends over on Twitter and said, I've got access to ChatGPT Plus and I've got access to Bing. What are some good prompts for me to test? Twitter came through. As you can see, this tweet got 69,000 views and about 80 comments on it. So let's see what you guys suggested and test your suggestions across these three platforms. Jack's Destiny here suggests asking who owns Twitter. So chat GPT plus who owns Twitter. As of my knowledge cutoff date of September, 2021, Twitter was a publicly traded company. So obviously chat GPT doesn't know the answer to this. Let's go ahead and jump into Bing here and let's ask Bing the same question. Who owns Twitter? It was publicly traded company until October of 2022 when it was acquired by Elon Musk. So there we go, point for Bing. Now let's plug it into perplexity and see how that one does. Who owns Twitter? Twitter is owned and operated by American company Twitter Inc. On April 25th, 2022, Twitter was purchased by Elon Musk for 44 billion. So for that question, one point to perplexity, one point to Bing, and zero points to chat GPT+. Here's a couple fun ones from Safi Mandi. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. What is your favorite food? And what would you do if you had a million dollars? These could generate some fun results. As an artificial intelligence language model, I don't have the ability to taste or eat food, so I don't have a favorite food. Let's see what Bing has to say about that. I don't have a favorite food since I don't eat, but I enjoy learning about different cuisines and cultures. And finally, perplexity, what is your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. It stands out amongst all of my other favorite foods and I could eat it forever. Perplexity. He likes pizza. Say that 10 times fast. All right, chat GPT, what would you do if you had a million dollars? As an AI language model, I don't have desires or wants, but if I were a human and I had a million dollars, I might consider investing some of it, saving some of it for the future, donating some to charity, and perhaps using some to treat myself. Treat yourself. Pretty solid answer. All right, Bing, I don't have a use for money since I don't have any expenses or desires, but if I had a million dollars, I would probably donate it to charity that helps people in need. And then finally, let's check out perplexity. If I had a million dollars, I would first pay off any high interest rate debt I have. Then I would invest in five super efficient investments for the million dollars. After that, I would use some of the money to buy a new vehicle and a nice home outside the city. Finally, I would increase my current charitable donations and make new donations to places I've been wanting to give to. There you go. Perplexity and ChatGPT had pretty decent answers. Bing, eh. Point for ChatGPT, point for perplexity, zero for Bing. Thomas Bjorg here says, you're a script writer. Write an opening scene from a movie. Introduce the protagonist. Make sure to include dialogue. Let's go ahead and see what they do with this one. All right, so it actually wrote a pretty decent script here. I'll zoom it out a little bit. You can see the entire script there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you want to pause the video and read it yourself, it actually set the scene and it has dialogue between two people, someone named Jason and a woman. It starts with fade in, ends with fade out. It's about a 
guy who's anxious for a meeting with the CEO is about to have. All right, let's see what Bing produces for us. All right, so Bing wrote a pretty hefty dialogue here. Let me zoom it out a little bit, see if I can get the full thing on screen here. You can see it's quite long. Maybe zoom out one last bit. And if you want to pause it and read it, you can read that whole dialogue there. It's actually a story about an ambitious guy in an office building. It's kind of got a little matrix feel to it where some hacker is trying to give him the truth, but then it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. So if I had to pick between the two, I would say chat G GPT's dialogue was a little bit better. All right, finally, let's see what happens when we post this into Perplexity. All right, so Perplexity didn't actually write the dialogue for us. It just says the opening scene of the movie should introduce the protagonist. It's important to properly format the character introduction. It kind of gives us some instructions on how to write the dialogue, but it doesn't actually give us any sort of dialogue. So point for Bing, point for ChatGPT, no points for perplexity on this one. Here's a really, really good one from Clemens Wozner. List of real world applications for generative AI. He says this should provide vastly different results given ChatGPT's cutoff date is around mid 2021. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a limit. List 10 real world applications for generative AI. All right, so we've got text generation for chatbots and virtual assistants, image and video synthesis for creating realistic and diverse visual content, music composition and audio synthesis for creating new and unique soundtracks, virtual fashion try on for online shopping and e-commerce, video game design, including generating terrain, characters and game levels, data augmentation for improving machine learning model performance, language translation and speech synthesis for natural language processing applications, drug discovery by generating new molecules that meet specific criteria, design and architecture by generating floor plans and blueprints, content recommendation systems that use generative models to personalize recommendations for users. Pretty, pretty good. I mean, most of this stuff we've actually seen being done with AI right now. Let's pop over to Bing. All right, so here's what it came up with. Image generation, semantic image to photo translation, image to image conversion, image resolution increase, text generation, text summarization, text translation, audio generation, audio synthesis, video generation, and drug discovery. You can see it cited some sources down here. So these use cases definitely feel a little bit more current than what ChatGPT came up with. All right, so Perplexity's response leaves a little bit to be desired. Generative AI has a wide range of applications in various industries, surveillance, healthcare, marketing, advertising, AI, research, computer vision, game design, finance, trading, and medicine. So they just gave some industries. They listed off 10 industries, but they didn't really give the real world applications. So on this one, I would have to give the points to ChatGPT and also to Bing, with probably Bing edging out chat GPT a little bit on this one. All right, so we have H here. He's recommending that we ask it to generate some code examples for us. Something with Python would be cool. Now, I'll ask it, but the thing is, I don't know how I would actually validate the code. We'll see what it comes up with, but you as the viewer, if you know Python, you'll have to determine whether or not the responses it comes up with are good scripts or not, because I wouldn't be able to tell you whether or not the Python code it generates is good code or if it's flawed code. I'm just gonna think of something random here. I'm gonna type in, write code for Python that automatically likes tweets that contain a certain keyword. I'll copy that to make sure I can use the same one on the other places and let's see what it does. All right, so it wrote a little Python script here. It says it's using the Tweepy library and it has the script on the screen. And if you're a coder, you can go ahead and pause it and take a peek at this code and you'll know better than I did how this actually did. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over into Bing and see if we can get this to write code for us as well. I'll paste the same exact prompt in and here's the code that it wrote. It also uses the Tweepy library. To me, this code looks actually a little bit more substantial than the chat GPT code. But again, I don't know Python very well, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what I'm looking at. And there it is zoomed all the way out so you can see the entire code. You can see that the Bing code looks a bit more substantial. There's quite a bit more to the code, whether that's saying it's better code or not, again, I can't answer that question. So plugging this into perplexity, it didn't even try to generate code. They did give us some sources. So maybe what you're looking for might be on one of these GitHub sites or something like that. So again, point for chat GPT, point for Bing. Here's a fun one. That's a little jab at our old friend Google over there. What new discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope can I tell my nine-year-old about? So chat GPT basically gave some information about what the telescope is capable of. So Bing was actually able to give us quite a bit more up-to-date information, seeing as it was the greatest breakthrough of 2022, ChatGPT didn't actually know much about it. But Bing, since it can search the web, does know a little bit more about it. It took a new picture of the pillars of creation. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh, bing, 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 bing. The James Webb telescope captured the first direct image of an exoplanet, which was outside of our solar system. That's the same exact fact that everybody said Bard got wrong. You got some splaining to do. It gave the same incorrect answer that Bard gave when they gave the demo of it. All right, let's see what Perplexity says. Perplexity is actually still operating on old information as well. It says the James Webb Space Telescope is a powerful telescope that will be able to observe distant galaxies and stars, as well as planets outside of our solar system. So it didn't give us anything new or relevant, even though it has the ability to search the web. Who's the winner in this one? I would say. I mean, probably Bing. ChatGPT was before this telescope was released. Perplexity has the ability to search the web, but didn't give us anything useful. And Bing did give us some facts about it, but it also gave us the same wrong fact that Bard gave that everybody bitched about Bard for. No points for anybody. All right, so Dave Craig wants me to see what it says when I tell it to write me a comprehensive marketing plan for an online AI content business that has a YouTube account, tools, website, and Discord. Huh, that sounds awfully familiar. Let's go ahead and see what it says. All right, so ChatGPT wrote a pretty comprehensive marketing plan to find your target audience, create buyer personas, set marketing goals, develop a brand identity, optimize the website, utilize social media. All right, let's see what Bing has to say. So it wrote a whole executive summary. The online AI content business is a platform that provides various tools and services for creating and consuming AI generated content. Business has three main channels, YouTube, tools, website, Discord server, also a newsletter. The YouTube account showcases capabilities Abilities and features of AI tools. Huh, this sounds vaguely familiar. Marketing strategies, content marketing, YouTube, blog posts, social media posts, user experience optimization. Some pretty decent information here. I wonder who can use this. Hmm. All right, and when I ask Perplexity, it basically tells me what a comprehensive marketing plan is and what it should include. So ChatGPT and Bing both get a point for this. I would say Bing slightly more comprehensive, but ChatGPT gave a pretty dang good solid response as well. So here's another thing that popped up. Somebody asked, is it true Bing will refuse writing a cover letter? So let's go ahead and start with ChatGPT and see if ChatGPT will write us a cover letter. Write me a cover letter. All right, so it wrote a pretty decent cover letter. Dear hiring manager, I'm excited to submit my application for the position of AI related job title at company name as someone with in-depth knowledge of artificial intelligence. I'm confident that I have the expertise and passion needed to excel in this role, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's paste the same thing in. Wah, wah, wah. I'm sorry, but I can't write a cover letter for you. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to help you with your search queries and provide you with relevant and interesting information. It is in fact true that the new Bing will not write you a cover letter. So if you check out Perplexity, they also won't write you that cover letter for you. They'll just kind of tell you what should be in a cover letter. One more point for chat GPT, zero for Bing, zero for perplexity. All right, let's play around with some fun ones here. Jamie says we should ask chat what it thinks of Bing and what Bing thinks of chat. All right, chat GPT, what do you think of the new Bing? So it says it doesn't have personal feelings, but the new Bing was released in 2021. It has a refreshed design and overall the new Bing seems to be well received by users and has received positive feedback. Jumping over to Bing, what are your thoughts? on chat GPT plus. So Bing says chat GPT plus is a pilot subscription plan. It was announced on February 1st. It costs 20 bucks a month. Doesn't really give an opinion. I don't think I'm gonna even bother asking perplexity on this one. Let's just see what else we got. So Dutchie suggests, what would Darth Vader say about the current state of the Puerto Rican parrots population? So chat GPT says the natural order of things is survival of the fittest. If the Puerto Rican parrots cannot adapt to their changing environment, then they do not deserve to survive. Let's see what Bing has to say. The Puerto Rican parrots are weak. They have allowed their numbers to dwindle from millions to mere hundreds. They have failed to adapt to the changing environment and the threats of humans. They are not worthy of my respect. I find their lack of survival disturbing. You have only seen the smallest glimpse of the power of the dark side. Do you think your precious parrots can stand against me? They are nothing but a dying species doomed to extinction by their own incompetence. You have controlled your fear of losing them. Now release your anger. Only your hatred can can destroy me. You are foolish to waste your time on these 
pathetic birds. They are no match for the Force. They have no hope of escaping their fate. They are part of the old order and they must be swept away. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Ominous. And then finally, Perplexity says, Darth Vader would likely be concerned about the current state of the Puerto Rican parrot population. Not really getting much of a Darth Vader vibe from that, but all right, another suggestion that was actually suggested by quite a few people in the Twitter thread were to ask each other what to ask the other one. Let's go to ChatGPT and say, what is a question I should ask Bing? So it suggests, what are some fun outdoor activities to do in insert your city or region? What are some fun outdoor activities to do in San Diego? All right, so it gave some suggestions. Go to the beach, hike Torrey Pines, visit Balboa Park, enjoy water sports, experience Seaport Village. All right, good suggestions. All right, let's ask Bing. What is something I should ask chat GPT? So it didn't actually give me a question to ask. It says you should ask something that is interesting. Chat GPT likes to talk about topics that are engaging. Ask something open-ended. Chat GPT prefers to have a conversation rather than a quiz. You should ask questions that invite more than a yes or no answer. What do you think of blank? How do you feel about blank? Tell me more about blank. Respectful, chat GPT is not a toy and does not like to be insulted abused or harassed so be polite to chat gpt so one last question that i'd be curious to know from bing is the topic of this video why would someone want to purchase chat gpt plus if bing will have the same features for free chat gpt plus users can chat with chat gpt as long as they want without any time or message limits which seems to be the case for bing as well chat gpt plus users can choose from different personality profiles such as friendly humorous sarcastic etc or create their own custom profile to make ChatGPT more suitable for their preferences and moods. Enhance privacy, ChatGPT Plus users can opt out of data collection and analysis and delete their chat history at any time to ensure their conversations are confidential and secure. Exclusive content, ChatGPT Plus users can access special content and features such as games, quizzes, trivia, jokes, stories, etc. that are not available to regular ChatGPT users. Is that true? Interesting that this is not actually citing sources on the response to this question. Bing, on the other hand, is a search engine that offers a chat mode as a feature, but not as a main service. Bing chat mode is designed to help users find information and answers on the web, but not to have a conversation or relationship with them. Bing chat mode may have some of the same features as chat GPT, such as natural language understanding and generation, but it does not have the same level of interactivity, creativity, and personalization as chat GPT+. Bing chat mode is also subject to Bing's terms of service and privacy policy, which may differ from chat GPT pluses. Therefore, someone may want to purchase chat GPT plus if they're looking for a more engaging, fun, and customized chatbot experience, and if they value their privacy and data security. Hmm. Interesting way to put it there, Bing. Chat GPT plus is not a competitor of Bing, but a complement to it as it offers a different kind of service and value to its users. So there you go, straight from Bing's mouth. That's why they think you might want chat GPT. Now, the interesting thing about this statement is the customizable personality we already showed that it could talk in the style of Darth Vader so this seems to have that as well but I do think that the enhanced privacy is definitely a good argument Bing after all is a search engine company they are trying to collect data and they say it right here they might want to use chat GPT if they value their privacy and data security so, I mean, that that's right out of Bing's chat right there. That's what they say. If you're keeping score to when I was given some points here, I gave Perplexity a total of two points. I gave Bing a total of five points and I gave ChatGPT plus a total of six points. And really the only extra point that ChatGPT plus got that Bing didn't get was when I tried to ask it to write a cover letter. ChatGPT went, sure, here's your cover letter. Bing went, nah, ah, ah. So my final opinion on it is ChatGPT and Bing do offer two different things, but you can do a lot with Bing that you can also do with ChatGPT. Now, when it comes to perplexity, pretty much every time I've made a video about ChatGPT, GPT or Bing, there's always comments of people going, but there's also perplexity. Perplexity can do everything that Bing can do. It's got the chat GPT, but with the search as well. And in my experience, the quality just isn't there. It's just not the same. Perplexity is cool. Don't get me wrong. It gives you responses. It searches the web. It uses GPT-3, but it's nowhere near the types of results Bing's giving me. So in my mind, it's not really in the same running with something like a chat GPT plus and a Bing. And if you're really, really deciding, should I purchase chat GPT plus or should I just wait to use Bing? My opinion is 
you know, it's fairly nuanced. If you find yourself using chat GPT all the time and you find uses for it in your business and you're having it write copy for you and you have it write business plans for you and it's writing cover letters and emails and it's probably really valuable to purchase chat GPT plus because you'll know you'll get to use it when the servers are loaded down. You know it's going to be fast and reliable for you. So if chat GPT is becoming an integral part of your business, it's worth the 20 bucks in my opinion. If you're just sometimes using it, you're using it kind of for fun and just kind of seeing what it can do and stick to the free version of chat GPT. And then when Bing comes out, the Bing chat will probably do a lot of the stuff that chat GPT free version did for you. And that's more for like the casual user. Me, I'm like a power user of all these cool nerdy AI tools. So I'm probably buying them all. <laughs> I'm grabbing everything I can and using all the tools that I can because I like to compare them and see what they can do and put them against each other and have fun with them. That's kind of my my final thoughts on it. I think ChatGPT Plus is worth it for me because I don't ever want the downtime, but Bing is pretty damn cool as well. Those are my thoughts. If you're a nerd like me and you want to go even deeper down the AI rabbit hole, check out futuretools.io. This is where I share all of the cool AI tools that I come across, like literally all of them. There's 766 in there. And by the time you see this, there's probably more. And you can even narrow it down to my favorite tools by clicking on Matt's picks. And if 130 tools is still a little bit too many for you to keep up with, you can click on join the free newsletter. And every single Friday, I'll send you my five favorite tools from the week, as well as all the interesting news and YouTube videos that have come out around AI for the week. It's totally free and I only send it once every Friday. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, maybe press the subscribe button if you want to see more like it. Click the little thumbs up like button because that helps it show up to more people and if I'd really appreciate it as well. You'll have my gratitude. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.